Okay, here's the properties video. And first off, let's just start off with what we had from the previous video. If you haven't watched that, I would go watch that now. So basically, we were trying to figure out what x would be, and we ended up with this. We never actually plugged that in because I just was going to let you guys do that. I didn't really have my calculator with me. But if we take this and plug it in for x, this actually would be 9.5. And you're going to have to solve, obviously, this answer on your calculator. But I can show you real quick on the Google calculator, which is a really cool tool that I use pretty often. And I was already testing it out here earlier. But if we enter it, and you got to change your capital logs to lowercase logs. That's just how their calculator works. Raise it to this power. Include your parentheses. 3 to that does equal 9.5, and that equals 2.04. It goes on for a while, so they round it off. So that's cool. <laughs> now we can set up a little formula. If I just go back and undo this, we can see that we'll just say x or y to the x equals z. So if we were to say 3 is y, we'll change it there as y, and we'll change it here as y. And 9.5 is z. Whoops. Okay. And this equals x, of course. Then if you have y to the x equals z, you can just say To figure out what x is, you all you have to do is take the log of z divided by the log of y, and that gets you x. So this is a standard equation, I guess. We can go ahead and just try and okay, hold on. Alright, and I gotta parenthesize this whole thing. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so that's rule number one. Y raised to the log of Z divided by log of Y equals Z. Now for some other cool properties. If you ever have, for instance, let's just say log base X, and then just say y plus and then you have a log base x again these bases have to be the same number you have z that is the same thing as log base x of y times z i'm just going to put parentheses around this so that you know it's not log base x of y times z, it's log base x of y times z. Um, that's when you have addition. You can just change it to multiplication, only if they have the same base. If this was like base of n, then you wouldn't be able to do that. All right. And you can probably guess this one, but if you have subtraction, then it's y divided by z. So those are some nifty rules. Also, let's say you were to say, just going to copy and paste this, the log of y raised to the third power, or raised to the n power since we're using variables. That's the same as saying, this is cool, n times the log of log base x of y. So if you have an exponent in your of number, you can drag that down to the front, multiply it, you get the same answer. You can test that out if you don't believe me, but it works, and there are ways to prove it. I'm going to include a link somewhere. I found a really cool video. This guy does a really good job of 
explaining why that works. So you can see that. And yeah, also, just for the fun of it, I mean, you guys probably know this, but if you have, let's say, the square root of y, which I can't really draw in Microsoft Word. Well, I can, but it's, it takes too long. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to use this square root of y. Then you can rewrite that as oops, y raised to the one half. It's the same thing. Square root of y is y to the one half. That's just standard notation. So if you have the nth root. Okay, hold on. I don't know what I'm. The nth root of y is the same as y to the 1 over n. And I'm just going to show you that real quick. Let's just say fifth root of 32 equals 2. And if you were to say 32 raised to the 1 over 5, sorry, you got to have parentheses. Because otherwise, I was raising to the 1 and dividing by 5. You get 2. So that's good. That's a good thing to know. So now we can say, now that we have that knowledge, if you didn't already know that, the log of x, log base x of, we were to say the nth, you know, let me just copy this, <laughs> log base x of the nth root of y, you know what, these should actually be, that. all right, that is the same as saying, very good, um, that's the same as saying this, if you take out all of that, just put it there, and taking the number n and dividing this whole thing by n, so, you just, okay, the reason this works if you haven't already figured it out, is we're just using this. We're just saying the nth root of y can be rewritten as y to the 1 over 2. And if we drag 1 over 2 and put it in front of this, the 2 comes to the bottom. It becomes a denominator. So you, it, you have 1 times log of x over y divided by 2, or log of x over y divided by two or whatever number you use for n. Um, you can't use zero because you can't divide by zero. Obviously you'd get an asymptotical answer of infinity and negative infinity and imaginary infinity and all complex forms of infinity, I guess. Different video. Talk about that later. But if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just Google the word asymptote, and I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting stuff on the theory of dividing by zero. Okay, well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed these little properties, and they'll help you out, these five little properties here. Good luck with your future stuff in the math world. Till next time.